Hi everybody, welcome to the first November watch along episode for all of the lovely, hopefully lovely, art journals I made. So this week um, I did the Jenny Belly Forum challenge, which was seven backgrounds in seven days. And uh, the first thing I'm doing, so the first layer on all of my backgrounds is paper. So I ripped a couple of book pages and then I'm gluing them down with spray adhesive. And just to let you know that for the sake of this video not being three hours long, I decided to have only the first part or the first page of every day, I should say, um, filmed in real time and all the rest is sped up by 50% because I want to make sure that I'm less than one hour or around one hour with the video. Um, so I'm just simply gluing down the page and not going for any patterns yet or any specific layout. I'm just uh, using one page and gluing it down. I'm usually not very big on backgrounds. I have very plain ones usually or a very simple one, just one layer. Um, because I usually have planned out paintings in my art journal. However, um, I really liked the challenge, the, the way the backgrounds came together. I really liked it. I got to use um, the same medium but in different kinds of ways and uh, in the end you will see how all of those um, media that that I'm using here that is so much the same or very similar to all of the other pages how different the end results look so uh, I, I really really liked it I'm not I, I'm not sure how I'm going to put the pages in my book yet I'm waiting for the follow-up challenge on these seven backgrounds uh, maybe I know then when and how and where I'm going to put those down so uh, just let's wait and see right uh, but I really like that I could use up, especially with a paper layer now, that I could use up uh, those tiny paper strips and pieces that I had from shooting a couple of videos and uh, um, fulfilling customer orders and all of that stuff and having those tiny pieces of paper in my stack. Uh, now I could finally use them up and I really really liked it. I would usually not make these kinds of backgrounds because again I'm not a big background girl but uh, for the future I just might um, I just might do that once once in a while. I really like the outcome and I like the way it was almost a zen kind of experience while putting those pages together, doing one tiny piece at, at a time, uh, which was like one layer per day, seven backgrounds, seven days. You you do the math, you figure it out, right? It's not that hard. Um, but I, I, f I did find the that maybe 15 minutes per day, I did I did go into uh, kind of like a zen mode there and I really like that so maybe I take advantage of these kinds of projects in the future as well. So my spray adhesive by the way just uh, was empty, hooray, I didn't have any other in my stock so I went on for a normal paper stick glue here. It was not perfect but in the end it, it holds down enough and I know that I'm going to add more layers with way stronger gels and adhesive so I didn't mind using only the paper adhesive here. Um, as for... What, what, where was I? I just had a thought in my head and now I forgot. Oh no. Uh, I was with a zen mode. Hmm. I don't remember. Maybe I will later on. So, you see me gluing down all the different kinds of papers from 
newspaper to book pages to decoupage paper to photos now um, it's all kinds of whatever pieces of paper I have laying around in, in my paper stack that I'm trying to use up with these kinds of projects and for that I, I really like creating a background for something and I'm very curious what uh, the follow-up challenge will be so uh, yeah I hope um, that the way I put together my backgrounds actually works for whatever follow-up challenge comes because in the end most of my backgrounds uh, are well they remind me of a picture frame pretty much so there's always one area um, that uh, that that I can put one tiny piece of watercolor paper on or something, and then it looks like a picture frame or a framed art piece of artwork. And I wonder if that actually helps later on with the follow-up challenge or if it hinders me. I'm very curious. Um, again, I also was, well, it was different. I wouldn't say difficult or I didn't like it or something. I, I kind of liked it, but then again, uh, with my kind of schedule, it was uh, a tiny bit difficult. I had to cheat a bit, but doing something on one piece of artwork, like one layer a day or continuing the work with a different kind of mood and whatnot the next day that was different i usually don't do that because i take advantage of the mood that i'm in when once i started uh, a painting or an art journal page piece a crafting piece whatever um if i'm in a very different mood the next day my the way I paint or the way I put things together is totally different and you can see it in the artwork where where I um, stopped and what I did the next day for example and I usually try to avoid that but with this project it was um, well requested to do that over several days and not one day so on the one hand I really liked it because I could live my moods in the pages or in the layers of those different pages but on the other hand I really had to actively restrain myself not to just go on and progress with the artwork once I was done with a particular layer for the day I did cheat on two days because I would otherwise not have been able to finish it within a week and have everything filmed and put together for you guys. So I only saw the video with the description of the challenge the third day in because I was out of, uh, out of the house and uh, going someplace. So I didn't see it. Um, once I came back, I worked on the art journal challenge and I pretty much, uh, well, finished the, the three days, the first three days of the challenge in one go because I was three days late and then I combined day four and five, no, five and six, sorry, five and six because I was again out of the house on appointments running errands all day long and I wouldn't have had the chance to actually work on the page so there weren't even those 15 minutes in my day so I I did the work of two days on one day that I had enough time to actually work on the things uh, I'm now at day two and you saw me adding different kinds of things for example this mesh here that is actually for uh, building drywalls but I use that a lot with uh, concrete or uh, clay or something if 
I do have a sculpturing pro uh, project there, I use it, I use that mesh quite a bit. I also use it for stamping or stencils, I should say, to have uh, lovely patterns on my page or my canvas. So, as you already probably figured out, because you're very smart people, um, I'm working with 3D embellishments or layers on the second day. And I'm trying not to repeat myself too much, which means that I'm not using that mesh on every page that I'm doing. So for example here I'm using styrofoam pieces from packaging and I just rip them apart and I glue them down with a super glue um, which actually dries within 10 minutes. This is a very strong super glue. It holds uh, ceramic tiles and wood and whatnot so it's more instead of drilling a hole into your wall you could use this kind of glue. I, I really like it for uh, woodwork and other crafting things. So for the third page I decided to use this well it, it's almost like a wavy paper and it really has a 3D effect on the page and I'm just cutting it into random pieces and making well, at least for, for this one, I think it's a city line uh, or a, 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 yeah, um, a city picture or parts of a city picture, like with the high rise buildings and either smaller buildings or a fence. I don't know. The upper one could be a cloud. It could be part of the sun, the moon, whatever. Uh, and I'm just gluing those pieces down. I'm not sure what those pieces actually are in the end because uh, they could be anything but I know that I'm trying out for a city skyline and I will uh, will have some more interest on the page because of those wavy pieces of cardstock. For this particular one I'm just gluing down one tiny sheet of uh, watercolor paper and I'm using those dots these are actually punch outs from uh, like remains that would usually go into the trash with any other person they're from board games and I'm using them on my um, background pieces here and I'm using those fabric leaves at first I wanted to put them on the other page but uh, it would have been looking like a final or a finished original page and I didn't want that so I went for this um, page instead and I used some paper tablecloth and ripped pieces of it and just kind of made clouds and together with those wooden pieces from canvases I'm just creating a 3d effect on the page and just giving myself some space to put something else down later on if there should ever be a follow-up challenge which I hope will come I'd say mid-month mid-month would be very nice so I'm using the same super glue again uh, holding the wooden pieces down I don't have to wait for very long to um, to let the glue dry so it's very convenient to use this kind of super glue together with hobby craft glue for the lighter things so now on day three we are or I am better said I am working with different kind of structure gels or well different kind of gels I should say and I'm using stencils as well and these are also the remains of board game cutout pieces um, so they I use them quite frequently in art journal pages the first one I'm using here is decorative snow 
and this is kind of like a structure gel which is not as rough as my other structure gel that I will use later but um, it also is not a smooth medium gel it has character it has structure and I really like it so I used it to make a circle on the first page for the second one I'm using this kind of a grid here with a art gel mold which is way softer and it takes a bit longer to dry but once it is dry it's very solid but very smooth almost like um, whipped cream or something that you have in a bowl it's, it's a very weird um, feel when you touch it uh, it's soft but it's it's uh, well it's soft like smooth but it's also very solid once it's dry so I really liked it and I used this stencil with the mold there and I also put some parts of uh, that gel down where there was no stencil but just to blend all the different layers and papers into each other just a tiny bit there. For the next page I'm using uh, 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 it's the same decorative snow gel thing and I'm using another stencil just putting the gel down into those square and rectangle um, open parts there. Creating they, they almost look like buttons, like of a cash register or something, once I take the stencil away. And uh, for the background, I didn't use it, uh, take it to my advantage or didn't make anything with it, but maybe once uh, we have the follow-up challenge, I can actually do something cool with those rectangles there. Uh, I'm also using some... Uh, of that of that structure gel together with uh, a patterned palette knife there and I'm just making funny patterns in the gel on the page all over the page and covering certain parts uh, blending certain certain areas and I'm trying to be kind of random and I guess I am in a way uh, with this lovely page which is my favorite so far I use these X's and I'm using a normal artist gel that will dry clear and that is very solid once it is dry but it is like like a glue or something when you work with it and uh, it seals things in perfectly and I'm using it a lot for uh, decoupage paper things or just it's like a, a clear gesso almost so whenever I work with mixed media I really like to put that gel down if uh, I have uh, or I need to have an on poros uh, surface there to work with other media on top. So with this one I thought I do structure gel because to me it looks like a wall in a very old building that uh, has no wallpaper but just some newspaper pieces and some well weird linings of uh, of uh, structure gel or concrete on the wall there maybe uh, yeah a house from the 1920s or something in Eastern Europe you could picture these kinds of walls very much so so uh, I went for for this this kind of style just because I used uh, an old uh, use a newspaper with a quiet antique font there so I think that uh, sparked it in the end and actually that's to my advantage in this particular case so with the next one I'm going again with structured gel and uh, those funny patterned palette knives there. I'm using different ones, um, creating straight lines in the patterns. Some of them are more narrow, some of them are wider and more prominent, like the one in the middle that, that you can see there. The smaller ones you really have to 
well, look closely or use a zoom or something so you can't really see them. And all around the page I'm going uh, in with the Artist uh, Gel Light Molding just to um, seal in the edges of that grid, the, that concrete mesh there. Just want to seal them and, and don't have any rough edges, so using the light molding gel there. It is day four. And today I'm using acrylics and I'm using up uh, a few of my very old ones in very tiny containers. I'm trying to use them up as quickly as possible. Doing so once in a while in art journal pages. And the first thing I do is that I color the artist gel here. You can see that it dried transparent overnight. I'm just coloring it in a very light rose pink. So with the acrylics, I with 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 uh, some pages I go in very detailed or with very little color only, like with this page. With others, I'm slapping it on way more. And I really like the different approaches that I can do with one and the same medium there. And it doesn't matter which color I use, they're all from the same brand pretty much and they have the same consistency and all of that, but um, I can achieve different kinds of looks with the same medium and I really like it. So I'm using the same pink here for another page, just going all around the edges. I'm giving it a light uh, pinkish look there, which works nicely with that magenta part in the middle of the mesh. I really like that. So I'm just coloring the page randomly and then I'm going to let it sit and let it dry there. So I'm using turquoise. Uh, it's quite the greenish blue. And I'm using this one to color a couple of other parts of the page, especially the different patterns that I left with the structure gel and the palette knife. I'm just coloring them. Some of them stronger, some of them lighter. And um, I'm not really thinking about it. Again, I'm in this, well, I'd say it's almost a Zen mode since kind of way of working. I don't actively think about what I do. I just let my hand do whatever it wants. So with the next page, I'm using the same blue and I'm coloring all of the weird shapes that I made with the stencil there. And uh, just going all in, all in one go, coloring the tops of them solid, leaving the uh, sides white. And uh, coming back to the Zen mode and now thinking, I'm, I'm not actively thinking, oh, that would look cool or how can I do that? I just let my secondary brain, which is my left hand, I just let it work. And I'm not actually thinking about certain things that I do or techniques I should do or could do. And I don't really remember a couple of minutes there while I paint, it's just a very happy blackout, I would say, when you're in that zone where you don't actively think about what you do, but you can think about other stuff that you have to figure out in your life or something. So the next page, I'm just coloring those wooden pieces here and I'm giving that yellow tablecloth almost the shape of clouds you could definitely see that these could be clouds and i'm just uh using the same acrylic blue there trying to finish all of the color up um and working very quickly very loosely here and again i'm using the same blue i'm coloring parts of the next page of that wavy paper there and I'm, I will use the Bavarian blue on this page as well which is way lighter 
and I think it actually well it, it does work nicely with the orangey and yellowy background there so the blue is not as vibrant and it, as much in the foreground with the color uh, as the orange and yellow it's way more laid back and smooth and it blends into the painting or into the picture more which I find very interesting that the color still does that although it is on a different layer in the foreground it actually stands back quite a bit so I'm adding some more rectangle shapes that could be city blocks or houses whatever factories whatever you want to see in that kind of picture I just, I'm just adding it to the page so with this one I didn't want to cover up the newspaper because I actually wanted to have this rough wall look so for the acrylics part I chose to color the styrofoam and give the flower that was put down on the wall not only a shape but also a color that actually helps seeing what is on the page there or on the wall if you want to go for a scenery. And I'm just using lavender for the petals of the flower and I'm just coloring the top and a bit to the side. There's no shading, nothing. It's just a basic layer uh, of acrylics. And for those remaining two pieces I'm using green to indicate the stem of the flower. And that's all I do with acrylics on this page. I'm all otherwise trying not to cover anything up. So with this one I go wild. You see the autumn colors there with the autumn leaves and I'm trying to stay in the green, brown, yellow um, corner of the color wheel. And I'm just coloring the different shapes of structure gel that I did put down and that are meanwhile dried and feel like sand or concrete. And I'm just coloring them randomly with the three color tones that I have and I'm again not actively thinking about them because they're more on the geometric um, spectrum of shapes and they're not really having any meaning yet so I'm coloring them randomly and not trying to make a scenery on this particular kind of page. Also this particular page here I think is the wildest and uncontrolled one, the most uncontrolled one of all of the pages that I produced and I really like that I go from structured to so not structured um, like all the way with these seven pages that I produce here and I uh, I really like that they are so so different and that I am although I use the same material that I did not really copy any page and made like a sibling or something so I like it I'm adding some more of the um, sienna burnt I think it's sienna burnt or maybe umbra burnt I'm not sure so I'm using the brown let's just say it's brown I'm adding some dips and dabs here, but I'm mostly covering up the lines between the different kinds of papers and just going with some background work, like way background. So the next day it's time for ink or stamps, I thought, and I'm using my various different kinds of ink pads to add color or just shadows on the different kinds of pages. So I started with the one that I think to be a wall in the end and I'm using it to yellow the paper to make it even look older and more rustic like it's been there forever and it it hasn't been covered up. The sun did really make the newspaper pages even more yellow than they already were and 
that's uh, that roughness and that weathery kind of a feel or look to the wall. I'm trying to do that with the inks and I'm using uh, an ink that has kind of like a chalky finish so it's not glossy at all. It's, it looks very natural so uh, I think it works nicely and I'm dabbing a tiny bit of ink onto the structure gel but not a lot because again it's it's so rough and so sandy and well it just ruins my ink pads a bit so I'm not trying to go over that structure gel too much. I'm just using different kinds of sienna to very dark brown here just to well give it depth. I'm also inking up the edges a bit so that it looks really antique and vintage and old at least the newspaper part I didn't I don't want to look have the uh, vintage look on the flower that much that could be added way later however I'm also inking it a tiny bit just to create some sort of shadow or 3d effect that is not just the styrofoam putting it on top of the card stuck or the cardboard, but having some 3D effect by the color as well. So the next um, page that I'm using inks on is the one with the frame, the very clean one, the very uh, structured one. And I'm going to use different kinds of blue and purple on the crosses and also on one part of the background there just to add some some more interest I'd say not necessarily a frame or another kind of a frame for the watercolor paper but just some well color shadow layer fill in the blank whatever suits you best as a description for the right hand side of the painting and with the crosses, I'm just using some uh, pink and purple to um, give them a bit more depth and dimension. So I'm trying to stay very clean with this particular page. So the next one, I was very unsure what kind of um, ink to use but I only used a tiny bit of orange on the clouds and I used a bit of tallow green which is a bluish green on the wooden pieces there and a bit working like a frame or a shadow and I'm smudging the ink quite a bit there on the photo part and on the heaven part but I didn't really know what what kind of other ink what other patterns or whatever I, I should use so I think I was fine with that on the city line I'm just emphasizing the wavy structure of the uh, cardstock and I'm also using the inks to define a bit the structures of the buildings or defining shadows whatever you want to see in this frame in these frames and I'm also um, adding some uh, some shades yellow and gold as well as blue on the circle which could be the Sun or it could be moon or it could be any other planet in the universe whatever you want to see in there so with this one I'm just adding some of the chalky ink again starting with a light green just putting it down here and there um, trying to 
tone down the wild look of the painting only a slight bit but quite a bit there. I'm also adding some terracotta ink and then that's that and with the last one I'm just adding some pink to emphasize the mesh that is on top or it's actually a dark red almost and with this one I go for the pink and just go around the edges a tiny bit before I go on with the black ink pad and dab some well ink on there just to to emphasize the contrast or the the different textures that are on the page um, to make them visible I'm adding a bit of a black ink here and that's the day uh, the next day I went for pastel chalks um, since I had pretty much a, a, a gel or a structure gel or any other molding medium done on pretty much all of the pages. I had parts already that were sealed and non-porous but I also had natural parts where the pastel chalks would work very differently on and have very different feel and look in the end. So I'm starting with the city line and some greenish uh, so some bluish green for the houses as well as some tile green here and then I'm just randomly adding the pastel chalks to different uh, items or different different parts of the page and not all of them are visible but you can see it uh, no, you, you can feel it <laughs> when you touch the page. There you can really see that light green layer uh, underneath that, I'd say, dark blue cloud. You can't really see it, but when you touch the page, you feel the difference. And uh, that's enough for me already. So I'm now already at the stage where I find it very difficult to add even more to all of my pages and uh, I'm, I have to actively remember that it is okay to have just one or two um, parts, streaks, brush things, whatever it is that you put down that you don't have to put a whole lot on whatever page of that medium. Uh, so I, I had maybe 15 minutes there where I, where I was uh, struggling to put something else on top of all of the pages, but I also had to actively remember that I could just add a tiny bit and I would have, ha I would have my layer and still would not look too crowded or whatever because um, I wanted all of the layers to be visible and uh, I didn't want to cover all of them up so and I'm just using different uh, shades of color here of my pastel chalks adding uh, patterns or patches oh, I'm sorry Wee. yeah why it's, it's quite late, it's almost half past 12 while I record that. I'm sorry for the yawning. So I'm trying to um, add enough color but not to overwhelm everything. So the, at the end of the day for uh, this project I'm just adding a, a layer of fixative spray on all of the pages to seal in the pastel chunks. And then on the next day, it's, everything is dried, so all is cool. I'm using different kinds of markers that uh, I will add some final details or patterns onto the different kinds of pages. So for example, with this permanent marker, I am adding some dashed lines there. Nothing fancy, but it's the last day and I'm just putting some 
things down. I think the pages are pretty much done already. And um, that last layer that I put down there is just a nice, nice thing to have. It's not the must have to have a background there. <coughs> I'm also using a couple of glitter pens and glitter gel pens here. And I'm using the gel pens a bit more because uh, I have quite the rough surfaces here. And I don't want to ruin the tips of the glitter, glitter pens here. I'm just adding different kinds of patterns, different kinds of uh, shades, uh, trying to stay in line with the background colors that I already put down, but also have something standing out. So with this one using purple and pink, it's uh, definitely in the color scope things of the background already, but uh, the pink glitter is well, it's it's visible enough, it doesn't really blend. But then again, once it's dry, the color blends nicely into uh, onto the page. So I really like these pens to just give my backgrounds a finishing touch here. And there's not very much to say anymore for this last layer of all of the pages. I'm just using different kinds of markers to add some final detail, add some patterns, add some glitter. Nothing fancy really, just finishing off my, my pages and I'm very curious uh, what the follow-up challenge will be and uh, how they will turn out in the end and how I'm going to put them in my book. And until then, I would say I thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the watch along for how my backgrounds come together if I make them, which is randomly that extensive. I am usually way, um, way more, well, one dimensional with my backgrounds. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of a work. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I would also very, very much love if you'd like or share this video, if you um, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, if you have any questions, throw them my way. Otherwise, I wish you a very good start into the new week. Have a wonderful Monday and I'm going to see you with a new art journal watch along video next week. I'm going to see you with another art video on Friday and I'm going to see you with different kinds of vlogs throughout the week on Talk O'Clock and Gamers Couch. I thank you very much. Have a very good one and I'm going to see you. Bye bye.